You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building this morning. That's right. OG a legend. legend. Yes, sir. Mr. L.A. Reed. Absolutely. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks How's for everything? joining us. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I was reading your book, Singing to Me. I had no idea you were from Cincinnati. You didn't? No, I thought you was from Atlanta. Atlanta. What'd you think? Tell ATL? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. How does, a, how does a man have to, what kind of mindset does a man have to have to get out of Cincinnati? Oh, my God. Because everybody always said there's nothing in Cincinnati. What? Wow, people say there's nothing in Cincinnati? I've never heard that. Heard that. I've never we heard, heard that this that morning. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I don't want to get her in from? trouble, but she, she works for you. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, okay. Uh, I was just in Cincinnati last weekend. Geez, all yeah. right. Well, how'd you Got get out of Cincinnati? <laughs> well, I should ask her, how you. How did you get out of Cincinnati? Well, I actually, <laughs> I was on my way to Houston, and I was in Cincinnati. By the way, they have a Chick-fil-A in the airport. So you was there for a layover. That don't count. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. It's my first time no, there. No, I, I, love, I love being from Cincinnati, right? It's very difficult to live there for me. Gotcha. Right. Um, it felt... Um, it didn't feel like a place of opportunity growing up, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I found a way. I found a way to get out of there. You know, music, absolutely. Yeah, you know, music carries people a lot of great places. Absolutely. You know, so yeah, so I managed to get out. And you went through a lot of struggles when you were in Cincinnati financially. Just reading about mm, being not, in a I band and you guys having to just in an apartment with eight guys in one apartment. Yeah, but these was these was these were struggles that I invited into my right life, as a musician. Right? You chose yeah, to be a struggling yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. was the point of it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, could I have gotten a, a, a day job and 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 made ends? Of course I could have, but uh, for me that felt at that point like I was uh, sort of selling out and not really committed to my career. So mm -hmm. the struggles were by choice, and and I endured that pain and I I enjoyed it. A lot of people probably don't know you started off as an artist. Yeah. You know, how, how did that help you as an executive later on, being an artist? Uh, I, in, in some ways, I think it helped me to really identify with the struggles of an artist or the vision of an artist so that uh, I could sort of speak for them when they're not around. Gotcha. You know, and, and instead of treating artist vision as, as something that's trivial or, or um, I treated it as a vision that needed to be upheld and protected when they, were, when they weren't in the room. Right, I got me got myself in trouble with that many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you should have just been doing the executive business thing. Well, some people might have taken that 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 direction, but I am an artist advocate. Gotcha. You know, I'm not an artist anymore, but I'm still an advocate for artists. Right, so that's why I'm there. Now you still say, you're still an artist at heart. You got to be in the studio sometime and be like, hey, I got a bar for you. No, 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 no. You could have sang it like this. No, I'm fresh out of hooks. You ever look back and say, I've worked with some of the greatest artists ever in history because I didn't realize your connection with people like, you know, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Bobby Brown, Michael Jackson, just everybody. I can't say, not too many people have ever been in a room with those people. Yeah, I feel honored, you know, lucky. Those are pinch myself moments, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it is when I think about it, it's overwhelming. So I, I really don't think about it. I, obviously, writing this book, I had to sort of reflect back and, and walk through those days again. And um, they were pinch myself moments. I didn't know you started off as a side piece for um, for Pebbles. She was a, a side piece. Side piece. He was a side dude. Pebbles' wife, the side piece. What? Pebbles was married. He was a side dude. Pebbles came right the side dude. <laughs> you read this. Welcome, welcome to no the idea. show, LA. Welcome to the show. You read? Oh, no, we really did. We read. He was a good I, side I dude. never put it together that I was the side, the side dude. <laughs> he looks shocked right was now. Ruth. Let me tell you something. Pebbles was a ruthless. She wanted LA Reed. She was not playing. Yeah. And no comment. You, you're something else. <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still getting my arms around. I was the side piece. You were. Straight she was up. married. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you think you get the, you think you get the credit that you deserve as being an executive, as finding all these artists from Outkast. I don't think LaFace does. Us. Period. I don't, I don't, I don't think you do. Honestly, reading your book and, and yeah. going over some of the stuff you do, I don't, I don't honestly think you get the. Because you hear Motown, you even hear the, yeah. the rap labels, the Bad Boys, the yeah, Rockefellers. They pumps. don't mention. LaFace. You guys kind of made Atlanta the hot spot for music, really. Yeah, you, you listen, I, I, 
we didn't we didn't stand up and say notice us. That's not that was never our approach, right? Mm-hmm. And we didn't tag our records. Mm-hmm. Our records weren't tagged like this is a LaFace. You know, we didn't LaFace we didn't jackets. Yeah, and chains. we didn't we didn't yeah. approach it that way. It was purely about the music and the artist. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm very happy with the respect that I feel that we get or the respect that I get uh, for what I've done in my career. It was never about um, sort of standing up, be noticed. Everybody, you know. Um, give give me a pos- I, it, that wasn't what it was about it wasn't an ego trip mm-hmm. it was really about uh being a supporter of talent and really helping music grow and and really sort of helping the quality of music be great did that mess up the industry a little bit because you got executives after that all in them videos all on the music <laughs> it, it seems like it changed the music industry a lot where executives wanted to be stars opposed to letting the artists grow. Yeah, because like you said, you're an artist advocate. Yeah. So it's hard to be an artist advocate if you're still trying to be an artist. Um, I think they're two different things. I think that what we, I think what you're getting at is a different era, you know, uh, when, artists, when artists became executives, mm-hmm. but they remained artists, right? Uh, so I think they wrote a different rule book, you know? So it was, it's okay for an art, for an executive to be in a video it's okay. What's, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if that particular executive is the ring, sort of the ringleader, you know, or, or the maestro, uh, and is providing a platform for other talent. I, I don't see anything wrong with like it. Like baby right? But it just wasn't my way. Right. You know what I mean? That's just that wasn't how I did it. But uh, I I don't I don't I I won't I wouldn't um Not I wouldn't you. say that Diddy did it wrong. I say he did it right. Right. Mm-hmm. It worked for him. It, it you, worked for you him. You think being in the South hindered LaFace kind of, just as far as branding purposes? I didn't feel hindered. Yeah. I, I do, I'm, y'all had it popping. I'm pretty good. Had, <laughs> Whitney Houston at the yeah. house. No, I, mean, I, I know I, y'all I had it popping, but I'm just talking about as far as, like LaFace should be mentioned with the all-time great labels. Like you yeah. should not be talking to all-time great labels without talking to LaFace. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. But it Thank seems you. like it never is, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I wonder if being in the South is what caused that. Wow. Well, that might just be, you know, when I'm in the South, I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't hear it. <laughs> I don't hear it in New York. That's yeah. what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, right. who was the first artist that you guys signed on the face, and why? The very first artist. Um, wow, that's interesting. It's a funny story. Actually, the very first artist might have been a choreographer named Divine. Mm-hmm. Divine. He's a kind of famous choreographer. Mm-hmm. I thought he was a rapper. But I didn't know anything about rap. I'm famous for not knowing anything about rap. Mm-hmm. I know a lot now. Mm-hmm. But at that time, um, he was a great dancer, and he said he was a rapper. So I was like, oh, cool. So I booked him on the Arsenio Hall show with Pebbles. Mm-hmm. And only then did I realize that, wait a minute, he's not that good he's a rapper. He's not a good rapper. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great dancer. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a learning experience. Um, and we had a duo called Damien Dame that we signed. Uh, they had a record called Exclusivity. Um, they were the first act. Mm-hmm. So the beginning days of LaFace were not like off the chart success. It was a struggle. It, it was wasn't a struggle. explosive. Yeah. Yeah. And your first, so you mentioned first act, act. Okay. The what? first act that made it that was the first hit was uh, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, TLC. TLC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you guys did the Boomerang soundtrack. That is one and of my favorite And then we did Boomerang soundtrack. around the same time. And, and we did Boys to Men's End of the Road. And, um, and PM Dawn was on it. Tribe, mm-hmm. uh, Tribe Called Quest was mm-hmm. on it. That Boomerang soundtrack was yeah. pop. Love should have bought you home. You. Johnny Gill. That's how we broke Tony Braxton with Boomerang soundtrack. Now, mm-hmm. You mentioned you weren't a rap guy, which is interesting because you had some of the greatest groups ever, Outkast, yeah. even Goody Mob. Like, when did you start embracing rap? Because it's always the infamous story DMX said when you had the Chinese slippers and the beads on. He said he knew Def Jam was going to pitch then. Yeah, Def Jam did quite well while I was there, yeah. you know, just to get the record straight. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, he did really well. Um, and, uh, but, but I, I embrace music. I embrace culture. I never embraced any of it as a particular genre. Right. So to me, I never separated like hip hop from R and B from pop music. I I never separated it. It was either good or wasn't good to me. Gotcha. Right. Either the artist mattered or the artist didn't matter to me. Right. And I I never, I never looked at it. I didn't grow up putting things in boxes. It either gave you a feeling or it either gave me the feeling or it didn't. And I didn't I, I didn't know the difference. I, I still don't care about that difference, you know. I love Kanye West uh and I love Rihanna, right? And I love Mariah Carey. I don't know if they're all the same, but they're all they're, to me they're all great. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that's how I look at it. I like what you said. You said either they matter to me or they don't. Or they don't. <laughs> Why would you sign somebody who don't matter to you? 
Oh, well, people get signed to labels sometimes that, you know, there was people signed to the label before I got there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or there are other A&R people who you support their vision. Um, and you just never know. You know, it's a crapshoot what we, what we do. You know, right. We bet on talent. Yeah, I, I, I always hear the story about how the label loved Tierra Marie. They thought she was going to be the star over Rihanna. But it wasn't that we didn't love Rihanna, just to be clear. Okay. We yeah, love that's what Rihanna. it made it seem like that. Yeah, that is like, ah, oh, Rihanna's second but fiddle. Oh, but no, 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 no. could have did it. She even admits herself that she wasn't dedicated the way yes, that she should have Yes, she been. wasn't. But we love Rihanna day mm -hmm. one, so mm -hmm. it wasn't that. Um, but uh, I think we signed Tierra before we signed Rihanna. Mm -hmm. And she had her shot earlier. Um, and then, you know, Rihanna just took the whole game by storm. She did. You didn't let Rihanna leave the office. No. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, well... If, if I'm into it, you're not leaving my office. You know, a lot of people say that. They say that you did that with Bobby Schmurter as well when Bobby yeah. Schmurter first signed. There were lots of people. You wouldn't let him leave yeah. the office. If you like him, they, you're not leaving the office. How do you negotiate under pressure, though? That's a lot of pressure. Who's, who's well, not for you, but for the artist. <laughs> like, I got to call my lawyer. I got to yeah. get my agent here. Like, I can't. What you mean? But you, know, but you know when you come to my office that you, you, know, you bring your team. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Don't come otherwise. Okay. You know, because you know that's what I'm going to do if I like it. What's the danger if somebody walks out when you put that in, like, you're not leaving the office? That never happens. Really? Nobody's ever said, I got to think about it. Let me get my thoughts together. And At your own peril. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, would that insult you? I'm not chasing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not desperate. You know, but you know I love you, what I love. But you also wouldn't yeah. just sign a deal on the spot either at times. Like, you've had a, when you actually, um, left Arista and stepped down, you could have signed with a few different places. Everybody wanted you. Yeah. So you understand the thought of, okay, well, let me weigh out my other options. Yeah, it took me 40 minutes <laughs> to weigh out my options. Right. Right. I left Arista, and 40 minutes later, I had a handshake uh, with Doug Morris to uh, come to the Universal Music Group, which turned into Island Def Jam. So uh, I think that here's here's why and it's it's not that i'm pressuring artists into signing like sign right now or you're going to lose the opportunity it's that i believe great artists also already know where they want to sign mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before they walk into the room i think they've already thought this through as artists can be very very smart um and, and they think about this they spent many many years thinking about where they want to be so if you're running a company like island def jam and you know that there are great artists there. If, if, and if you are an MC, you probably thought about being signed to Def Jam. So right. it's not like you're walking into the room and I'm going to pressure you into doing something you've never considered, right? It's mm -hmm. an opportunity. And, and, and what I'm doing is making that opportunity a moment. Now, know? with that being said, Rick Ross, you recently signed Rick Ross. Yes. Now, how, how did that go? Because like you said, he was with Def Jam five years. He pretty much has a family there. He knows everybody there, but he jumped out that boat. Um, but we're family, you know, I've always been close to Rick Ross, mm -hmm. you know, from the very beginning, we signed him when I was there. Um, you know, and I think it run it, that, that his stay had run its course mm -hmm. and, and he's a very fortunate. And I think we're very fortunate that we all get another shot. You so know? you get nervous with Rick Ross cause his last album didn't do as well as expected. Like, you know, it, it, I don't want to say you have him on his yeah. downslide, but Album wise, he's the comeback wise. king. L.A. Reid's the comeback king, though. That's true. He brings uh, uh, no, back. don't don't give me that pressure. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a comeback king, but I am. Uh, I'm supportive of the culture, right? And and I like to think of myself as not as a fair weather friend, but as a real c person that's really committed to your career. So it doesn't matter to me. I I think great people are always one hit away from having massive success. Absolutely, right? Even and, in this day and age. Oh yeah, that's what I believe. Yeah, that's what I believe, right? And 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 even if, even if it isn't massive success, um, do they deserve a home? Do these artists deserve a home? I look at it this way: the Rolling Stones doesn't have to look for a recording contract, or mm -hmm. Bruce Springsteen doesn't have to look for a contract, and he's been in the business for how many years, right? So I don't want any black talent to wonder, well, like, why don't I have a home? Right? Yeah. Why don't I have a home? Uh, you know, Barbara Streisand still still has a home. Does she still sell like Mariah? Does she still sell like that? I'm not sure if she does or doesn't. It's mm -hmm. not my business. But the point is, she has a home. Right. She's taken care of. So it's my job to take care of talent. That's interesting. That's why, why why isn't hip hop allowed to get old? Like why we can't have the Rolling Stone type of artists? Yeah, like all the artists you name are not. Most yeah. of the older artists are not signed. Right, and that's a problem to me. So I, as as much as I can. I'd like to help that, you know? I mean, that that I think is, 
the responsibility that I put on myself is to, to the extent that I can, help take care of the culture. You know, I had Ronald Isley signed from the Isley Brothers. He made his first record in 1959. Mm. I had him signed uh, even while he was incarcerated, right? I kept him signed and took care of his family. And, uh, and I'm not saying that because I won an award or a trophy. Right. The point is, he's Ronald Isley. He's the Isley Brothers, right? He, you know, Jimi Hendrix was his guitar player. Elton John was his piano player. He's royalty. Yeah. So I want to take care of that. So do you to keep the legacy alive? That's, yeah. Who else is going to do it? Now, while you were writing this book, did you look back at some of the things that you made early on in your career and business decisions? Like, I was reading about you working with Jermaine Jackson, yeah. and then you went and started working with Michael Jackson, but you didn't want to let Jermaine know right. about that. Now, when you look back, I mean, who's going to turn down Michael Jackson? But, exactly. But I would have made that same. Like I told... I'd make that same decision tomorrow. <laughs> 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 but you could have told Jermaine ahead of time, and you know, and been I like, probably would have handled it exactly the same way. Wow. <laughs> you seem like a very straight shooter. Like you said, Jermaine. Like Jermaine, you're just not it. Like you're he cool. Didn't tell I didn't that. say that. <laughs> he did not say you that. You can go go. But I told you a troublemaker. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta understand. It's Michael but, Jackson. But, yeah, but at that point, that was Michael's business. Mm -hmm. and Jermaine's business, and they were separate. Right. They weren't the Jackson 5. Because you were dipping out. Like, like I'll be back in her. three weeks. I got to go to L.A. <laughs> yeah. Now, now the, T the TLC biopic, how did, what did you feel about that? I didn't watch it. You didn't watch it at all? You want to know why I didn't watch it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I have children, and, and my ex-wife was portrayed in the movie, and I didn't watch it, but I knew that my children were not happy about it. So um, if I got to make a choice, I'm going to side with my family. Mm -hmm. Right. I always wonder why why your name never comes up when they talk about, you know, artists were getting robbed, that they weren't getting what they were supposed to receive. Like, it's always, the blame always goes to Pebbles, but it never goes to you. She was their manager, though. Yeah, right. but but in fairness to her, um, she didn't, she doesn't collect the money from, you know, record sales. Record companies do that, right? And at that point, we were in a joint venture with Arista and BMG. So if, if Pebbles... If Pebbles is accused of not paying TLC, then that means that I didn't pay her, which means that they didn't pay me. Mm -hmm. mm. So if we're smarter about it, we're going to look to the source and say, wait a minute. So where was, where, where, if there was a shorting going on, where would that have taken place, right? And I can tell you on the record that Pebbles never robbed anybody and never ripped anybody off. And so it was coming from... Waiting to get paid the from Arista. I'm listen. You're all smart people. Mm -hmm. Let's blame it on the white man, Ali Reid. Let's do it. Y'all smart people, <laughs> <laughs> right? You're smart. That, but you that, even said that. that the situation with TLC is really what kind of broke up your marriage with Pebbles. Yeah, Just, it was. Yeah, it was difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, was it was like difficult. you were on the artist side, and you couldn't really. That is difficult though, working with your wife, and then there's some discrepancies, and then you have to. Yeah, they said there was a relationship with, with you and one of the members. Chili, you and Chili. Yeah. Chili. I didn't even know her like that. <laughs> mm. no. If I was going to have one, it wouldn't have been her. But I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she was the finest one, though. Come on. She was the finest one in L.A. now. You okay. said you were close. Chili was bad. Different baby. strokes for different folks. L.A. seems like he like him spicy. Probably would have been left out. I think all three of them LA. actually had a great look, and they were very different. It just depends on now your I preference. I agree with that. Yeah. You know, because some people thought t Boz was the cutest. Some mm -hmm. people thought Left Eye was the flyest. And right. Some people thought chili. It just really is your preference. What's more important, talent or the look? Because I, you know, I read stories and I, I know you talent. you love the talent, but you also say Rihanna had a great look as well. Yeah, ta the combination. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I always say it's the entertainment business, right? So it's it's the combination that we love. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, you can't really separate them. You know, mm -hmm. it's the person that has it all. That's what we're looking for. All right. You know what I mean? The triple threat, right? I know you talk about Pink in the book and her kind of, a, and Avril Lavigne, them yeah. establishing like their own looks and coming in. You can yeah. look at somebody, like Jermaine Dupri was up here the other day and he was saying he can He took make... all the credit for Usher too, by the way. No, he... Jermaine did? Yeah, he yeah. said. No, he did. That's not why right. he's lying. <laughs> That's cool. He did, he did. But but he he said saying, it, he did it. He was saying he, he, said... he can look at somebody and even if he can make anyone into a star if they have a certain type of, you know. I he kind of did that, right? He, he, with Chris I Cross. I felt like he did that with Chris Cross. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, he can. I can't do that. <laughs> now, when Pink said uh, you could be a pop star, uh, but L.A. said all you have to do is change everything you are, how'd that, how'd that make you feel? It was just fun. It was, she was just joking me, you know, because I took her to a restaurant once, and and there was too much there was, there was too much um, silverware, china and silver <laughs> and flatware on the table. And she was like, what is all this for? I said, you know, you should take an etiquette class so you understand <laughs> what that is. 
oh, now you want to change me. (laughs) 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 Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Did you talk to Babyface before you wrote this book uh, about what you were going to say about him and it being that you guys were partners and then had a falling out somewhat, but still kept in contact? He was very much a part of it, Mm -hmm. the writing. You know, he was very helpful to me. You know, that's really my brother. Right. Yeah, and and we have very honest conversations about things. And even things I'd forgotten, some of the stories that I wrote about were uh, stories that he reminded me of. And so I wrote about them. Yeah. Did you ever think about doing it together, like a joint thing? Yeah, we still may. La face. Yeah. And what was y'all falling may. out for? We didn't fall out. Oh, you didn't fall out? No, no, we had girl problems. Oh, girl in between y'all? Not like that. Oh, oh. No. But it seemed like you weren't really sure we why y'all couldn't... Mm. Jai, oh, really? Define girl? What do you mean? Yes. Girl, or define girl We're women problems. in our like, lives, like, you know? <laughs> like y'all was messing with the same girl? Or? No, we didn't do that. We never did that. You know, the good news is that we never even liked the same girl. <laughs> Got you. I'm really happy about that. But we, have, we were influenced by the women that were in our lives at that time. Both of us were. Oh, I see what you're saying. You said you know he had I mean? to call you from the car. He couldn't even call you from the house. I felt like the side piece on that one. Oh, you know, always <laughs> the side piece. <laughs> 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 He's <laughs> not gonna let that he go. Did say that. Let that go. Go. He's gonna be like, I was the damn side. <laughs> <laughs> I see your trends. Now, when you left, when you left Arista and you went over to Def Jam, and you know, Def Jam being a, a big rap label at the yeah. time, and you know, was there any fear for you? Because you always say that I'm not, a, I, I can't pick rap. That's not what I do. Was there any fear for you going to Def Jam, a rap label? No, I can, I can pick talent, mm-hmm. right? I, I, I never say I can't pick rap. I mean, the truth is. You know, from Outkast to CeeLo and the Goody Mob to Young Jeezy to Rick Ross to yes, sir. to Future to I mean, you got it. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't think there's a question there. You know, um, it was a different culture. Even Ti early on. Yeah, Ti I was signed to the face, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I I love what I love again. You know, but no, there wasn't any fear. But it was a different culture, and what I really struggled with, um was being from a different walk of black life. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? And 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 coming into Def Jam, which I felt was the people's label. Mm-hmm. You know what it was it was it was it was you guys' label. It was DJs. It was it was everybody in hip hop. It didn't belong to a particular person. It belonged to the culture. Right. And I knew I didn't represent what that culture represented, right? Yes, I'm black. Yes, I'm proud, and 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 I think that we can all agree that I'm I'm at least successful enough that it was a a logical choice. Right. Uh, but it was the difficulty was it wasn't thought of as uh, a it wasn't like LaFace or Motown or or labels like that. It was a rebellious culture, and I didn't come from that. So the only thing I that concerned me was if people would believe in the company from that point. And that's why you brought in Jay-Z. And we fixed that. Now, now with, with that company, how did you deal with all the problems? Because at the time, Jay-Z was president, but LL Cool J didn't like Jay. Jewels didn't like Jay. It was like... But I didn't know those things. He didn't, he, you no, I really it. didn't know. I, I didn't know what the relationships were between... It, and no one told me, you know. So um, I really didn't get into it, you know. So, you know... Those weren't, I didn't think of those as my problems, mm-hmm. and, and so I didn't take them on. Do you personally still like the music you put out? Like, are you riding yeah, the Dirty Sprite yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, I love the music I put out, yeah, yeah. I love Future, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Future's dope. I really, really love Future. I loved Future early on when people were saying, why? But there was just something soulful. That's a soulful dude, mm-hmm. right? And, and I like that. Does it yeah. feel strange because, like, you had the original Dungeon family, and Future's kind of like an ex- a member, extended member of yeah. the Dungeon family. That actually feels great. Yeah. yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? And and he's still very close to them. Like, he's still very close to Andre. Mm-hmm. You know, and Andre was one of the people that said, you know what, well, you got this one right. Like, pay close attention to this guy. You know? You know what? I listen to the artists often. Artists tell me what's happening. Mm-hmm. They always know. Like mm-hmm. the, they always know. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, it's not like they can always do my job, but they can always tell me. Like, pay attention to this. Pay attention to that. I listen to the talent. Do you ever want to uh, pr- tell Future pump the brakes because he puts out so much free material? As he looks to his uh, <laughs> neighbor people over there, I guess that's a yes. <laughs> that's money we're not making. He puts money out, put that so out so much free music. You ever yeah. be like, yo, what are you doing? You know what? Um, yeah. 
I've had those conversations. I have those concerns. You know, uh, mostly it's not not because it, it's free or not free. What I really think about is like every artist has a window that they make their great music, mm -hmm. right? And the more music you put out, the closer you're getting to the end of that run. That's the thing that concerns me is like, don't burn out. Mm -hmm. Don't put out so much music that you burn yourself out early, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's more my concern. But I think a lot of the artists feel like if I don't put out music, I'm gonna burn, burn out. out. It's kind of like the whole out of sight, yeah, out of mind. Right thing. Everybody too. got ADD yeah. nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Um, but that that's still that is still my concern. I mean, way back in the day, James Brown put out a record every week almost, you know, mm -hmm. and his run was like forever long. Uh, so, but you just never know, you know. And my job is to really catch the sweet spot of an artist. Mm -hmm. That's what I really look for, you know, is as, it's okay, I can ride with you beyond your peak, but I'm still looking to capture that peak, you know, and that's my biggest concern is that Future doesn't put out so much music um, that either we miss the peak or, or that we just burn out. Do you still think artists have those 15, 20 year runs in them? Like the way Jay's still around, yeah. or any of those guys? Like Yeah, all great artists have that, mm -hmm. all great artists. But you just never know which one is the, the, the one-hit wonder. You never really know. We think we know, but you never really know. I was going to ask you, so how do you decide how much you put into an artist? You know, I remember when Future first came out, he put out his, his, his record, and it was a hit in the streets, but radio wasn't accepting to it. It wasn't doing right. good on radio. How do you know, you know what, I'm, I'm going to keep putting money into this artist, or, or Rocco, or Yo Gotti, or Bobby Schmurter? How do you know when you, you say just gotta, I just have artist. to go with my gut. You know, I can't really, I don't operate based on um, uh, analytical data. I do this completely from my gut. And I'm wrong many times. And I'm okay being wrong many times. But uh, I'm right enough that I can keep a job, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's based on my gut. Did you watch the Tony Braxton biopic? Nope. She said she had to sue the face too to get her money. I didn't watch it. You're going to have to make your own biopic soon, L.A. Because you and everybody else's biopic, you're going to have to make one. Not really. You don't think so? No. At least all based off the book or something? No. Man, this book was great. It was. Um, Thank you. Thank I mean, first of all, what I loved about it was there's a lot of backstories on, you know, albums that got made. Like, even the Outkast double album. I didn't right. know how that went down, and you described that in the book. Yeah. You had, that was um, a special album. You know, and that, I, I know you were relieved when that all happened. But yeah. it was uh, it was great for that reason, and then it was just some little anecdotes in there about people that made them seem more human, like artists that you interacted with. You talked about Michael Jackson kind of laughing at Prince, oh my god, and making fun of Prince. I thought that was crazy because I would never think something <laughs> like that. Funny. He put on Under the Cherry Moon, right? Which I personally like that soundtrack, but you know, you like the soundtrack. I did, did like, you like the, the not movie? the movie, but I did yeah, like the songs. A, he was basically joking about the movie and the James Brown performance. You know, yeah. And then uh, he had a... I mean, at that time, Prince and Michael Jackson were like the two greatest artists alive. Absolutely. And, and, and I didn't know there was any like rivalry there, but so that was fascinating. Right, it was. You know? And I really didn't think that Michael Jackson would even think about something like that, you know? <laughs> He's petty. Yeah. Uh, it, wasn't even, it wasn't petty. He was just having fun. He really said it. Hey, you want to have some fun? <laughs> and I didn't know you had Pebbles and Paula Abdul about to throw down. Uh oh! See, oh, there you well. go again. What? It's see? in the book. <laughs> I, like, read I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> he said he didn't read it. He didn't read it. Didn't I don't watch the biopics, and I didn't read the book. <laughs> you don't even peek at the biopics to see who's playing no, you. No, 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 no. You know, cockroach played you in the TLC biopic. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> cockroach man. from Cosby. I don't know who that is, <laughs> man. <laughs> I don't know who that is. You don't watch the Cosby show. I don't know who that is. No. Now is it? I know Lisa Bonet. She was on that show. Yes, I don't know who that is. He knows, all the women. he knows all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> now, is it true you gave Jeezy a million dollars sign and he didn't cash it? In yeah, that is true. For yeah. a year. For a year. He didn't cash that million dollar check for a year? Must be nice. So who reminded you of that? The IRS? Like, a <laughs> million dollar check ain't been cashed. Like, <laughs> I see Benny. I'm done. <laughs> That's it. Right there. I told you. I told you. He's a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> a million dollar check. That's all right, right? Yes. He held that for a year. I would have went right to the bank just time. to make sure it cleared. Yeah, just to make sure it cleared. <laughs> Quite some time. Yeah. Who was your favorite Did that situation scare you at all? What? I mean, because Jeezy's one of my favorite rappers of all time. Mine but too. I mean, everything that Mine was surrounded too. with him, the BMF time, and everything. Street culture, no, street culture. man, life. I'm in the music business. You know right. what I mean? And 
and I'm in the entertainment business and I love artists and that's that's my life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, w w afraid of what? I mean, you know, you sign him, you invest in him and then he goes to jail. He didn't. He didn't, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's a gamble. That's, that's a fact. It happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you happens. ever get threatened by any artist? you ever have any problems? No, no, no. 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 Nothing like that? No. No, um, I have great respect for the artist, and um, I believe that they have great respect for me, and and, and we we need each other, mm -hmm. you know. You call flack for the Bobby Smurda situation, but I heard you on the Rap Radar podcast. I thought you gave a great explanation as to why you wouldn't bail him out. Um, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> you basically said it's a new day and age. It's a new era. It's not like back in right. the day where you know Snoop would catch a case. You knew Snoop was gonna make a lot more money. Right. You like no, yeah, but but it also you know um, I don't I don't pretend to be a um, I don't own Sony. Mm. I'd, li I'd like to own Sony, mm. you know, uh, but I don't own Sony, so mm. I can't make every corporate decision on Sony's behalf. This is a, a multinational, publicly held company, right? And they have to be responsible for decisions like that, and that's really not that's, that's not my decision. And and if you if you want, am I spending my money? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. You gotta respect the honesty, though. I'm spending on my children, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's my responsibility. You think artists make the mistake sometimes of thinking that the executives are their friends? Because I remember reading an article you did in, I think it was Black Enterprise some years ago, and you said, "Remember, this is the music business. Yeah, it's a business." Yeah, I think sometimes you know. By the way, that goes both ways. I sometimes. Uh, I, I'm under the illusion that they're my friends. Mm -hmm. And I'm often reminded that it's business. Right. You know, as a matter of fact, I would say I've gotten my heart broken more times than the artists have uh, with that rude awakening that it's business. Mm. Yeah. Who would you yeah. say that you were for real friends with? Like what artists that you've worked with would you say, that's really my friend that I can call? And oh, uh, uh, several of them. You know, Big Boy. You know, Big Boy from Outkast, a real, a real friend. Or uh, Babyface is a real friend. Mm -hmm. You know, Mariah Carey is a real friend. You know, about Usher. Uh, Usher is a real friend. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever talk to Usher when he was going through the thing with his 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 wife and he was having a hard time? Did you help him out through that situation? Um, yeah, I talked to him whenever he needed to talk. I just talked to him. I just mm -hmm. spoke to him yesterday. I'm gonna see him later today. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, I talked to him. And who was your biggest miss? The artist that you wish you signed that you let walk out your office? Uh let walk out. I I don't know. I mean, I signed Lady Gaga and le and then dropped her. You know, that was a big. That was miss. a big miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a massive miss. <laughs> Ti kinda, cause he was on LaFace and then he wasn't for his second album. No, Ti left LaFace when I left Arista. Oh, okay, okay. I got fired from Arista and Ti was like, okay, this is my out. But no, that wasn't a miss in right. my opinion. You know, and and I still dig Ti and I was happy for his success. And I, I just I was I really respected that he was savvy enough to figure out how to get out of the contract and go to Atlantic at that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> that was probably the best firing that could have ever happened to you, though, at Arista at that time. Yeah, not that day. No. <laughs> but you had another job, right? Like, yeah. You out. I'm and then always you had a big job, boy but... and Andre 3000 thanking you on stage. Yeah, it was good. And it was that. I mean, it was a... a lot of great things that came of it, mm -hmm. you know, again, but not that day. <laughs> <laughs> not that moment, you know. You know, you know, you really, you really want somebody to say, "Listen." But they offered you something else. You could have. Yeah, it, but I was too. You, you, I was like punch drunk. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even hear that they were offering me something that was actually great. I couldn't even hear it. Mm -hmm. All I heard was, "We want to make a change," and all of a sudden, I saw stars. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so it's, you don't want that. No, yeah, it's never fun you at that time. That. But you everything happens for that. a reason. You still got that high school diploma? You paid for your house? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely framed. <laughs> now, where'd you get a high school diploma for $40? Across the street. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point of having it, though? For my mother. Oh, she, okay, okay, got you. Here. Got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you didn't have to go to summer school. Yeah. Yeah. So you lied to Something your mom. done. <laughs> You lied to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> it was for a good cause, I guess, though. Yeah, hey. <laughs> right? So, uh, L.A. Reed, where do we go from here now? Where do you see the future of music? Because things are so different from when you first started out 
until where we are now. It seems everything is so much more digital. So much it's not more different. Social it's, it's, media It's so involved. not different. Let me as tell you something. As far as selling records. There's none of this stuff it is, is different. It's different. No, it's not. Only, what's different is how music is distributed. But the fact of music, whether you like it or not, mm-hmm. that didn't change. That's you true. hear a song, either you like it or you're not. You don't right. like it because it's on Spotify. Mm-hmm. That's true. You don't like it because you learned about it on Twitter or somebody... Or, or would somebody use the Vine? That's not why you like music, right? That's distribution. And that's always changed. It used to be an 8 track. It used to be a 78. It used to be, you know, 45. It used to be a cassette. You know, that's they've tried everything, you know, but that distribution will always evolve. Mm-hmm. But the music itself is all about whether the music is great or not. And I'm not a distributor. You know, I'm a producer. So I care about the quality of the music. Uh, so to me, nothing's changed. You don't think the quality went down? It seems like with technology, it seems like because anybody back can do day, it now. Yeah, it seems like the back yeah. in the day, you if you had to know your artist was good because you had to pay for studio time and you was right. going to invest in artists. But now, like you said, you got a Mac, you can make a, or you can make an album. Yeah, it doesn't make it great though. You know what I mean? You can't fool me. Let me just put it that way. I don't care where you made it. I don't care if you made it in a studio or in the phone booth. It's, if it's good, I'll know it. If it's not good, then I'm not paying any attention. Who, who's the last you person know? that blew you away? Blew you away in an audition? Blew me away. Uh, let me see. That's a tough one, man. I can't really remember right now who who blew me away. It's been a minute. That Megan Trainor's pretty good. Yeah, Megan was pretty good. Yeah. That's been a couple of years now. All right. uh, but Megan's really good. Yeah, but I, I see them all the time. Um, but blown away. Like, I'm looking for that. I hope that happens today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like that legendary yeah, I'm artist. A, I'm, I want every day that's what I'm looking for. I've heard in Every auditions day. some artists would be like, man, he wasn't even paying attention to me. He was on his phone. He was on yeah. his laptop. He got up, left the room, Damn. came back. It didn't even seem like he was interested. That's a bad sign when he gets up and leaves the room. Is that a bad sign? It's uh, it's it's all by design. Poker face. It's all by design. You know what I mean? I, I, but I'm looking to be blown away. Mm-hmm. I just want, I just want, I want chill bumps. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I can't get them often. I mean, great, great, great artists are not, uh, that's not an everyday thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, how many great artists pass through here? Greats, mm-hmm. like Jay-Z caliber greats. How many How many of those passed through here in, in, in the last couple of years? You know, a couple. But we don't know, though. Not 25. No. Well, you don't know until 10 years from now. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, but yeah. you, it, what, are they great in the moment though? Are they great right then in that moment? You see certain things, like I can remember when Kendrick first came in. You Drake. knew, you guys knew. You kind of you was, knew it was something special with Drake. Even he looked like a janitor, but it was something right. special there. Drake too. So the greats of right now. I mean, I don't want to turn the interview around, but mm-hmm. I just want to know from you guys, the greats right now. Is that Kendrick Lamar? Kendrick is great. Drake, Kendrick, Drake, Drake, J Cole. That's J Cole. J Cole. Those are the three. Those, that's the Biggie, Jay Z, and Nas of okay this era. And how many years did it take for uh, for that to take place? Because um, before that, it was Biggie and it was Jay and right. Okay, yeah. so we're talking about really we're talking about like six people out of hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of hundreds of people that have walked right. through this room. Yeah. Right. Right. So. That's how often great stars are born. Um, so you can't get them every day. Is my point. I mean, I, I like I think like I think Tink is special. She signed it. Yeah, the Tink epic, is very special. But you won't know until a few years from now. Exactly. And even you didn't like Future at first. You said he... no. I always liked Future. I didn't think he could rap. I didn't think he had lyrics in the traditional so sense. What is, of... doing? what is it though? He what makes is great it songs. Like? He makes great records. Like great records. You in the club? It's great songs. But I just don't understand what the hell he's saying sometimes. Right. I think I might have said that you know you 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 need a lyric sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go to rap genius. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah. That's soul music. The future's doing. That's soul music. It's a different version of it, but that's mm-hmm. a different form of it. That's soul music. That's not traditional rap, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're saying. Absolutely. But then that will be judging him by a different bar. You know, um, you got to base artists on who they are. And even me, I'm fr- like I'm from the south, but like, you know, I grew up on rappers like Outkast, Goody Mob, UGK, Eight Ball, and MJG. They were very audible. What are you, Texas? South Carolina. South Carolina. Yes, sir. How do you get out of South Carolina? Wendy Williams. God. <laughs> Wendy Williams God. them out. God. <laughs> right. That's right. It. God. <laughs> Thank I don't you. Know. Amen. So, who are your top five R&B musicians? We always ask about the, the top list. Who are your top five R&B musicians? 
Oh. Why I gotta be R and B? Why I'm you put him in a box? Rap because he says he's all he does R and B. I'm gonna ask rapper. In this I'm music man. All right, just so any top genre. Five music. Just musicians. It doesn't matter what they what? sing or what they rap or what they top do. five. Top five. You know I'm much older than you guys, so you know my list might. You like who? Who? Shalimar. That? You know. <laughs> Sly. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know Sly and the Family Stone? Yeah. Of course. Yep. My poppy played, my daddy played him. Yeah, that's that's in the that's that's up there. That's mm-hmm. way up there, you know. But I'm a traditionalist. It's 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 Prince, man. Prince, Prince is number one, period. Prince over Michael Jackson? Um uh, as a, a musician. Debate. Yeah. Okay. I love it. And it's a debate. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow I'm gonna say it's Michael. Okay. Right. <laughs> and and I go back and forth on that one. It's very difficult. But it's Prince and it's Michael. Uh, Kanye West is up there for me. Really? In, yeah, in, in top five of all time. Really? Yeah. I, I think Kanye don't realize that. how important he is to music. Yeah, Kanye's incredible. Like, to me, that is one of the great, 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 greats. You know, and I do believe 20 years from now that, I don't know, but I think 20 years from now we will still think of him that way. You know, um, Jay-Z is up there. Of course. You know, way up there on that list. Um, Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. Might be the greatest ever. Yeah, I mm. love Whitney. Yeah. Yeah, so so my list is a combination. Okay. Yeah. Why, why, why did you say X Factor was the hardest thing for you to do in your life? Uh, because it was a different, it was a different judging experience. You know what I mean? I didn't see the kind of talent that I, used, I was used to seeing. Mm. I didn't see those people. I didn't see the Kanye West caliber talent. So it was too amateurish, basically. Yeah, right. Yeah, but but I I don't like saying that because I was a guest. I was Simon Cowell's guest. It was his show, mm-hmm. right? So it, it's like I was a guest in his house. So uh, I don't like that I've said that. You know what I mean? It's honest though. Uh, but but that's how I felt. It was just a different caliber. Do you think those type of shows can breed the caliber you're looking for? They can breed those mega stars. I don't, I don't think so, but, you know, Kelly Rowland has a show called Chasing Destiny that's coming out, and I just watched a couple of clips from it, and it felt like, it felt like she might have had, a, she might have a better shot, because, you know, she's attracting a different kind of talent for her show. We'll see, you know, but you never know what talent is going to come from. You just never really know. Yeah. You, know. you can get the book right now. It's called Sing to Me, and we appreciate you joining Word. us today. Oh my God, we survived. Yeah, we survived. You, now, now you can breathe. You can breathe. You want a drink now? Yeah. <laughs> now, let's open up all of that. Thank you, guys. This is great. Thank you. Know, you. Know, we love like, you. Yeah, yeah, they I was But you know, I watch. I watch a lot of the, the people that you've had in here, man, and it's been some some entertaining. Moments. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we just try to be. I like particularly like Damon Dash when he was. Damon Dash was oh, fun. Gosh. Yeah, that was fun. That was great. That was fun. You ever been That's screamed at by Damon Dash? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. I asked everybody that question. Exactly. Huh? No. <laughs> no. no. I respect Damon a lot. I really respect him. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. I do. I do too. This is a little, a little, a little misguided when it comes to people who aren't in the position he's in. Right. Because some agree. of us still have to work, and yeah, it's that's nothing. Right. And, and if you're a boss, you still have to have employees. Right. So you can't insult people and say calling somebody boss is like calling another man daddy. Right. You know? Yeah. Would you hire Dame Dash? I mean, you you, you got it, you did a deal with Puff, you did a deal with Ross. I did a you... deal with Dame before too. A couple times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give everybody a shot. I see you give everybody a chance. I'm not mad at you. Everybody. I feel like you need to invest in like old school hip hop radio stations. I think that's what's missing. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think because I feel like the it's like thirty years of music, hip hop and R and B that's just gone. That's gone. It's not playing on the radio. Like they, are they, they playing think, on the satellite station? Satellite, satellite station. Yeah, satellite they, and station. you know what? They, they have, have a lot, uh, as far Backspin. as like all the streaming stations, you can definitely get that yeah. on there. Like right. as far as Pandora, Spotify. Like they even took away the I throwback heart. mixes on terrestrial radio. Like I feel like it needs to be like a BLS for just strictly hip hop and R&B. That's, that's not on the air. They have in yeah, certain they, spots. They have, radio One's yeah. invested in a few. I think I, they have one in Atlanta right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, they have one in Atlanta. They would invest in one. Mm-hmm. Right. Should be one in. I don't yeah. think you'd be the guy that could really like make it yeah. impactful. It's though. It's <laughs> really interesting. But that that's see what you're saying is a little bit of like what I'm saying about the talent, right? We can't discard talent. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we can't do that. Nobody else is doing it. Yeah. You know what? No, nobody nobody's disc- David Boy had a record deal to the day he died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think all the classic rock stations. You know, but Jeffrey Osborne doesn't. I mean, just by example, yeah. right? 
so I, you know, so it's a different, longer conversation. But you know, there's higher purpose, you know. And yeah, I want to still make some hits. I want to still make stars. I want to still make some money. But right. my real cultural responsibility is to just keep people working. Oh, right. That's great. One of our favorites, now Rogers, is still out there thriving and getting it. Yeah, he's getting it right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's something too, man. He wanted to, I didn't realize he was as great as he is. <laughs> he's great. Anyway, thank you guys. That's L.A. Right. Reed. L.A. Reed, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, 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 hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning, tune in.